In this lecture, we'll deep dive into Hara by going through the chain of implications with an example and learn about how to derive ASL. As you recall, in the previous lecture, we talked about different stages of safety development life cycle. And so we'll start from top left by going through Hara and how we derive ASL from it, which is highlighted in green at the top. I'd like to explain Hara by going through the chain of events and to help you understand how we go from one step to the other. But first, let's talk about what an item definition is, which is an input to Hara. An item is a system or a combination of systems that implements a function or part of the function at the vehicle level to which the standard is applied. For example, a motion control system or a brake system is an item which implements the torque command function or the braking function. Some other examples include adaptive cruise control system, infotainment system, steering system, advanced driver assist system, and so on. Once you've identified the boundary of an item or a system and the corresponding function that it implements, we describe the malfunctions that can appear for each function. And once you've identified what a malfunctioning behavior is, you define hazard at the top level or at the vehicle level, or how the vehicle is going to behave if that particular malfunction occurs in the system. As a next step, you determine what the risk of harm or damage is, which depends on risk of harm to people inside the vehicle and to people outside around the vehicle, which again depends on three parameters. That is severity of the failure, probability, that is occurrence of that failure, and controllability, that is how controllable the vehicle is by the driver during a hazardous event. Now let's talk a bit about these three parameters before going to the next step. First is severity. The severity of potential harm is estimated based on a defined rationale for each hazardous event. The severity is assigned to one of the classes, that is S0, S1, S2, or S3 as shown here, where S0 means no injuries and S3 means life-threatening injuries. The severity class S0 may be assigned if the hazard analysis and risk assessment determines that the consequences of a malfunctioning behavior of the item are clearly limited to material damage. If a hazardous event is assigned severity class S0, no ASL assignment is required. The next parameter we'll talk about is potential probability of exposure. Same as severity, the probability of exposure of each operational situation is estimated based on a defined rationale of each hazardous event. The probability of exposure is assigned to one of the classes, that is E0, E1, E2, E3, or E4, as shown here, where E0 means incredible or is used for very rare events, and E4 means high probability. The class E0 is assigned to situations which, although identified during a hazard analysis and risk assessment, are considered to be unusual or incredible. Some examples of E0 include natural disasters like earthquake, forest fire, hurricane, and so on. The remaining E1, E2, E3, and E4 levels are assigned for situations that can become hazardous depending on either the duration of a situation or the frequency of occurrence of a situation. The third and the last parameter we'll talk about is controllability. The controllability of each hazardous event by the driver or other persons involved in the operational situation shall be estimated based on defined rationale for each hazardous event. The controllability is assigned to one of the classes, that is C0, C1, C2, or C3 as shown here, where C0 means the situation is controllable in general, and C3 means the situation is difficult to control or it's uncontrollable. The evaluation of the controllability is an estimate of the probability that someone is able to gain sufficient control of the hazardous event, such that they are able to avoid the specific harm. Also, it is assumed that the driver is in an appropriate condition to drive. For example, they are not tired and they have a valid driver's license and so on. Based on the classification of severity, probability and controllability, you define your risk level, which is denoted by ASL, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Now, what is ASL? ASL stands for Automotive Safety Integrity Level and it's a five-step scale. 
all the way going from QM, that is quality management, to ASLD, which is the highest risk level. Based on the risk level, we define safety mechanisms or features to reduce that risk. Now, the safety mechanisms or features is a combination of both hardware and software, including different levels of testing. And as you can see from the diagram, the ASL is described as the distance from the risk acceptance limit, and the safety measures are added to bring the risk level down. Another way to think about this is, once you've gone through hazard analysis and risk assessment and identified ASL for a particular hazard, from a five-step scale, if the ASL is A, B, C, or D, we apply safety measures, or in other words, apply the ISO standard to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. If it's QM, which is quality management, the standard does not apply, or in this case, the hazard is already within the risk acceptable limit. Now let's walk through a quick example to better understand this. Let's say we have propulsion control system, which implements the torque command function. The malfunctioning behavior of this system could lead to undemanded acceleration, loss of acceleration, excessive acceleration, or insufficient acceleration. Picking undemanded acceleration as a malfunction, the next thing we define is a hazard at the vehicle level or how the vehicle could behave if the malfunction occurs. In this case, for example, the hazard could be vehicle moving unintendedly into a crossing way with oncoming traffic assuming the vehicle is parked at a red light when the malfunction occurs. The next step is to determine what the risk of harm is to the people inside and outside the vehicle. In other words, determining how likely is the hazard to happen? How harmful is the hazard? For example, in this case, if the vehicle hits a pedestrian surrounding the vehicle with unintended acceleration, and how controllable the vehicle is if the hazard occurs. Now, to answer these questions, we also factor in certain environmental and operating conditions of the vehicle, which is called vehicle operational situation, like what the vehicle speed is when the hazard occurs. The higher the speed, the more severe it becomes. What is the weather condition like? Is it snowy, foggy, sunny, and what's the driving situation like? Just to highlight, we will be assigning classes to severity, probability, and controllability as we go over a few real-world examples in the next lecture. All the above factors helps in determining what the risk level is or what the ASL rating is. So that's the end of this lecture where we learned about different steps involved in doing HARA and how we determine ASL. With that, let's walk through a few real-world examples in the next lecture and apply these conditions to determine the ASL rating.